so basically this is the demonstration video if you have any question in the middle of the video or later on you can uh, really uh, make me pause and uh, ask the questions right hello and welcome to the msc session of open form workshop okay. i have divided this session into three parts in the first part i will be covering the existing code mhd form and its test case simulation in the second part i will modify the existing code ico form to incorporate the mhd equations and in the third part i will set up a test case for this code there are two approaches in mhd module the first approach is the induction based approach and these are the governing equations associated with this approach this is the j cross b term known as the lorentz force term or the source term in the navier stokes equation equation 3 is the induction equation which is typically for the induction based approach this comes from the simplification of ohm's law faraday's law ampere's law along with the divergence free of the magnetic field in the mhd form j cross b further simplified with the help of ampere's law and it is in this form which is shown in red color this is the standard hartmann problem in this problem there is a 2d channel flow but unlike an ordinary hydrodynamic flow here we have applied a magnetic field in the transfer direction of the flow along with it the top wall and the low bottom wall are electrically insulated this image i have taken from this source and let us walk through this source what this contains here the problem is specified along with the equations which are typically in the code of mhd form here we can see that b is in the flux form so along with the velocity flux in mhd form we have the flux of magnetic field as well as we walk through these are the initial conditions velocity is initially zero in the interior domain or the internal field and we apply magnetic field of strength 20 tesla in the y direction this is the typical mesh generation and here there are 100 cells in the x direction and 40 cells in the y direction since the problem is 2d so only one cell is there in the z direction as we run the test case i will again describe how can we get this plot now let us discuss how the mhd form code looks like in the open form environment i am using the version 6 we go through application solvers electromagnetics and here it is mhd form if we open the mhd form dot c file so this is the typical piezo loop for the pressure velocity coupling and if we scroll down we have the analogous b piezo loop for the solution of induction equation which we just now saw as i mentioned there is a flux of magnetic field as well which is defined as phi b here also there is a fictitious magnetic pressure pb analogous to the pressure in the standard pressure velocity coupling now let us copy the hartmann tutorial so we go to tutorials electromagnetics mhd form and hartmann i copy it to my desired location i rename it say m hartman underscore mhd form if we see so 
so we have applied a magnetic field of 20 tesla on the lower wall upper wall and in the internal fields these are the standard pressure and velocity dictionaries as i mentioned there is a fictitious magnetic pressure for the magnetic field and these are the typical boundary conditions allotted to it coming towards the constant part it has the transport properties of rho which is density nu which is kinematic viscosity mu which is magnetic permeability and sigma the electrical conductivity now let us run this test case we first source the desired open form version we first clean the test case to generate the mesh we use the block mesh command after that we execute the mhd form code and save the log file it's pretty coarse mesh so the simulation is completed very fast now let us look at the profile we cut a slice perpendicular to the z direction and we go to last time step to see the velocity profile now we want to plot the velocity along a particular line let us say we choose the y axis if we see the actual velocity so this is a flat profile if it would have been an ordinary hydrodynamic flow so ideally we would have obtained a parabolic profile for you i have also simulated a test case without a magnetic field so let us open that case and see how the profile looks like and we compare these two profiles this is the hartman tutorial without the magnetic field here also we cut a slice perpendicular to the z direction we see the velocity so the contour plot clearly indicates that the velocity profiles are quite different in these two cases now again let us extract the velocity along a line the same y direction or the y axis and we want to compare let us rename it say ohd and say mhd form the blue line is the typical profile for the ordinary hydrodynamic flow and black curve is the typical profile with the hartman flow 
so it indicates that there is clearly a difference between the ordinary hydrodynamic flow and the MHD flow. In the next part of this session, I will be covering the code modification. Hello and welcome to the MHD. Oh yeah. So does uh, anyone has any question? Um, so there was a difference in both the velocity profile, but why was there a difference? Why is there a flat line in the MHD one? Yeah. So, yeah. So basically flow is from left to right in the ordinary hydrodynamic flow, right? And we get a uh, parabolic profile. We all are uh, familiar with it, right? But in case we apply a magnetic field in the Y direction, that is the transverse direction of the flow. So as we have the equations U cross B, here we see uh, the computation of J includes U cross B in this case, right? So the cross product will give J in the perpendicular direction of the plane coming out of the plane, correct? Uh, do you get that? Yeah. So that J, which is coming out of the page, again interacts with this B. So basically Z cross Y will give me the negative X, which is the force, the Lorentz force J cross B. Correct? Okay. Yeah. So that negative force, uh, essentially force, which is opposing the existing parabolic profile, so to say, correct? So okay, yeah. this will this will retard my flow or this will push my flow in the backward direction in the negative x direction. And that's how compared to the parabolic profile, which we get in the ordinary hydrodynamic flow, we get the flat profile in this case. Right? Okay. Because of the Lorentz force, hmm. as you also uh, saw that magnetic damping time which you all, uh, professor also discussed. So basically what mm -hmm. this magnetic field is doing, it's damping the flow in the bulk or in the core region. Right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So that's the thing. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, so the other question that someone uh, didn't ask, uh, it's a good question. Can you go to the profile, Swapnil? Yeah. So now the flow is getting damped in the bulk. But no one is asking why it is getting accelerated. It is accelerating in the on the walls near the walls. The flow is getting accelerated, right? This region. Yes, yes. So, is there anyone who can answer that? Maybe to uh, maintain continuity. Yes, there is of course uh, uh, one reason because it's if it's incompressible fluid, then where else the fluid uh, will go? So it has to be that is one reason. But the other reason also has to do with the boundary conditions. So there is something for you to uh, take home and uh, look at the effect of boundary conditions. Uh, so I mean, I, when I say boundary conditions, I mean the boundary conditions on the wall, on the top and the bottom wall, whether it is elliptically conducting or is it elliptically insulating. Those are some finer points which does affect the, the velocity profile. Sir, I have so, a question here. Uh, yes. If you change the uh, direction of the magnetic field, like uh, is it uh, the, the flow is going to be accelerated or what? Yeah, so Sapjit, would you like to take the question? Yeah. So basically, you are saying instead of the positive y, I make a magnetic field in the negative y direction, correct? Yes, yes. So in that case, we have j in the negative z direction. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. in that case, also the flow will be retarded. Okay. okay. Because both j and b become negative, so minus and minus become plus. So the Lorentz force direction doesn't change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. does that mean that the velocity graph would remain the same? Uh, yes. And it doesn't matter the direction of the magnetic field. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir, uh, in the zero folder, uh, we have uh, defined a uh, velocity file u. Along yes. with that, there are three different files: cux, uy, uz. So yes. uh, why it is needed to define them separately? No, UX, no, no, they are not needed actually because in the control dict file, there is a called function and it is just what uh, it is separating the X, Y and Z component. Without that also, we can do the simulations. It is just by default. They have kept in the distributed version of the tutorial. 
so i didn't remove in the next part i remove them uh, when i set a test case for my own customized solver uh, sir, can you also explain this uh, PB file, uh, this PPS magnetic field you said something? Yeah, so... so uh, can you please play the post-processing part again in pair of you? Yeah, so maybe first I explain the uh, magnetic, uh, fictitious magnetic pressure and then I play the video, fine? Sure, sure, thank you. Yeah. So along with that, I also open the code. So this is the piezo loop, a standard piezo loop for the pressure velocity coupling. Uh, here we have the pressure for the incompressible fluid flow. And similarly, to solve the induction equation, for the ease of computations, they have defined a fictitious magnetic pressure PB. Its role is just a computational role. It does not have any physical relevance here. It is only a computational entity, PB, right? So for there, uh, this the PB file is there. And these are the default boundary conditions which uh, they give on the boundaries, right? Are you okay with that? Means the concept of fictitious magnetic pressure? Uh, no, sir. I have some problem means in understanding this. How it is making the computation easy? Yeah. So, what happens during the computations? Let us say, imagine that if there is no pressure in the pressure velocity coupling. So how will the continuity be ensured? Correct. Since there is no direct equation in the pressure velocity coupling to satisfy the continuity in incompressible flow, it is through the pressure poison equation. If we take the divergence of the Navier-Stokes equation, we get this pressure poison equation. And in doing that, we are indirectly satisfying the continuity for velocity. So the same concept is used here because it is mentioned that B is also solenoidal or divergence free, right? So similar to that, if we take the divergence of magnetic field for the induction equation, which is this, but numerically it is not divergence free. Something has to be there to make it divergence free computationally. So it is through fictitious magnetic pressure, they are trying to make the magnetic field divergence free. Its role is just a computational role, not a physical relevance. Because theoretically or in reality, B has to be divergence free. Right? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So maybe older version is not having that solver uh, means I'm not really sure which version you are talking about Krishnagand. So maybe I now play the uh, post-processing part again as requested. From here I play. To see the velocity profile. Now we want to plot the velocity along a particular line. Let us say we choose the y-axis. If we see the actual velocity, so this is a flat profile. If it would have been an ordinary hydrodynamic flow, so ideally we would have obtained a parabolic profile. For you, I have also simulated a test case without a magnetic field. So let us open that case and see how the profile looks like and we compare these two profiles. This is the Hartman tutorial without the magnetic field.
here also we cut a slice perpendicular to the z direction we see the velocity so the contour plot clearly indicates that the velocity profiles are quite different in these two cases now again let us extract the velocity along a line the same y direction or the y axis and we want to compare let us rename it say OHD and say MHD form The blue line is the typical profile for the ordinary hydrodynamic flow and black curve is the typical profile with the Hartman flow. So it indicates that there is clearly a difference between the ordinary hydrodynamic flow and the MHD flow. In the next part of this session I will be covering fine. So maybe now I play the second part. In the first part, we have covered the induction based approach, but generally this approach is suitable for the applied magnetic field cases. In this case, the current density is generally dependent on the interaction of velocity and the magnetic field. And the electric field is due to the interaction of velocity and the magnetic field. But what if we have to apply a current density in a given setup? In that case, the potential best approach is more suitable because here we can apply current density J with the help of electric potential phi. In this case, the current density J is computed with the help of applied electric potential phi and U cross B can be safely ignored. The field distribution of phi can be computed with the help of Poisson's equation, equation number 4, by satisfying the charge conservation or the current continuity. There may be two cases. The first case may be the field or the applied magnetic field is through the external source and it may be the constant. So let us make a customized solver for this case. We go to the standard open form library. We go to the applications, solvers and in this case we will be modifying the ex existing code icoform which is located at incompressible dictionary we copy the icoform folder to our desired location let us say i make a new directory code and i paste it here I rename it, I name it elec port form means electric potential form. We also rename the C file and copy this name. We modify the look. Elec port form. We make it a user library. Save it and close it. We say it for 
laminar MHD flow in bracket potential best approach save it we rename the application name as well we open the create fields file here we have to define the other transport properties such as the density electrical conductivity and since the magnetic field is constant in this case so we also put the magnetic field in the transport properties dictionary for that purpose we copy this we rename new as row new as row row is the density so dimension of the density row we again copy it for the electrical conductivity sigma sigma and here we say dimension set and the, what is the dimension of sigma Siemens per meter or in the fundamental dimensions minus 1 minus 3 plus 3 0 0 2 and 0 now we copy it for the magnetic field since magnetic field is a vector quantity so we say dimension vector b whose dimensions are one zero minus two zero zero minus one zero which makes it the dimensions of magnetic field which is tesla or newton per ampere meter now we define a field variable potential so we copy it and rename it say elect port We copy this reference values for the electric potential. Let us say we want to have it in electric potential sub dictionary. Now coming towards the Navier-Stokes equation. Here we introduce the source from Lorentz force j cross b by rho and say a new variable Lorentz. But have we defined it earlier? No. Let us initialize the Lorentz force term. We 
बी से वॉल्यूम वेक्टर फील्ड लॉरेंस सिग्मा टाइम्स माइनस ग्रेट फाइव तो ग्रेड ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक पोटेंशियल क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाइड विथ द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड प्लस सिग्मा टाइम्स U cross B cross B now let us check whether it is correct or not by compiling the code let us copy the path open it in a terminal paste the location source the open form clean the code directory and compile the code it says unused variable okay we will use that in a later stage now let us proceed ahead similar to the piezo loop and the pressure velocity coupling we solve a poisson equation for the electric potential so after the solution of the velocity field we define a surface scalar field p s i u b this is for the u cross b term we interpolate the u cross b term u cross b term to the faces now we solve the poisson equation for electric potential we define a matrix essentially a scalar matrix for electric potential equation and we solve it implicitly laplacian of electric potential on the left hand side we have the laplacian of the electric potential and on the right hand side we have the divergence of u cross b term we have to give a reference value for the electric potential potential dot set reference electric potential reference cell which we have declared in the create fields file and electric potential reference value 
then we say solve electric potential equation let us again check by compiling the code yeah so i am already slow but uh, anyway i will uh, like to ask one question here what is the error what is the cause of error can anyone say you just now saw there is an error in the terminal while compiling this code at the intermediate stage can anyone say something about the error like there is a warning related to yes there is a warning yes definitely so what is the cause of the error can you say something about that to um, remove that error uh, no yeah i think you can give some hint maybe yeah so we require some initial conditions right that's what i am doing here i am defining a reference cell because you recall here i have a warning issue as well in the create fields file i have given this uh, electric potential reference cell 0 and electric potential reference value on that particular cell is 0 and to solve any equation we need at least some initial condition agree so that's what i am doing here i have given this initial condition for the electric potential but according to the syntax this what is the error i am asking questions to you what what may be the probable cause of this error is it correct definitely it's uh, incorrect that's why it's giving error so what should be the correct thing here okay anyway let me play the video it says need a reference yes it is not for the electric potential rather for the e electric potential equation right agree because we need reference to solve that particular equation poisson equation for the electric potential for that we need a reference to solve that equation so that's the error it is compiled now let us compute the current density from the electric potential we do it on the surfaces of the cell let us say we call it as an jn sigma times minus fvc since we are doing it on a faces so surface normal gradient of electric potential and we multiply with the face area plus u cross b term we make this scalar as a vector on the surface so surface vector field j n and v for the vector j n v let us say j n times mesh 
dot face center we interpolate the current density from the faces to the cell volume or the cell center and we call it as a j final if we see surface integrate of j and b minus of if we see surface integrate j n times mesh dot c now we correct the boundary conditions and the final updating of the Lorentz force j cross b we save it and compile it it compiled successfully so basically we have included the mhd equations essentially the potential waste mhd equations in the ico form in the next part we will set a test case for it so does that, uh, anyone have any question if you can have it at the end of the third video yeah sure yeah in the previous part we have modified the existing code ico form and to do that we have strictly followed the instructions given in this report now we will set a test case for it we go to the distributed version of open phone we go to tutorials go to electromagnetics MHD form and we copy the Hartman tutorial to our location. We rename it for our customized solver electric potential form. We will not use these scripts, so we delete this. We will not use the magnetic field as a field variable, the fictitious magnetic pressure and the velocity component. So we delete these files. We copy pressure dictionary for the electric potential. We rename it as electric potential. We open it. Let us say electric potential whose dimensions are one, two, 
माइनस थ्री जीरो जीरो माइनस वन जीरो इनलेट एंड आउटलेट आर कंडक्टिंग एंड दिस आर गिवन बाय फिक्स्ड वैल्यू जीरो लोअर एंड अपर वॉल आर इलेक्ट्रिकली इंसुलेटेड एंड दिस आर गिवन बाय द जीरो ग्रेडियंट बाउंड्री कंडीशंस बट देयर इज अ कैच हियर we have to give a symmetry boundary condition for the front and back right from the mesh itself so instead of empty we give it a symmetry condition we change it in the pressure and velocity dictionaries as well and we save this changes now we change the transport properties this new is not required so we remove it we give the magnetic field in the transport properties itself with the dimensions 10 minus 200 0 minus 10 and we give the same now is it correct to give magnetic field boundary as a transport properties the first question from my side and the second question the is the value correct i'm thinking like uh, uh, here instead of here whether we have to give it in the boundary condition no that's what my question is why i am not giving it as a boundary condition rather i am choosing to give it as a transport properties which is constant you be uh, like uh, there are two components in the magnetic field one is the external one and the another one is induced maybe you are considering the external one as a constant and giving it as a transport property right right correct what about the second question is the value given to b which is 20 written here is correct i am not sure or like previously also we have consider 20 tesla in the hartman case oh uh, yeah that that's correct but the way it is written is it correct so the answer is magnetic field uh, though we are giving magnetic field in the transport properties but still it is a vector quantity right and if we simply give 20 so it is it will be considered as a uh, as a scalar not the vector so that's what i correct it here it is strength 20 tesla we save it oops since it's a vector so we have to give all the components now we see the respective files block mesh we have already made the front and back symmetry here we change the name electric potential form we do not want to compute these functions so we remove it magnetic field is not solved so we remove the schemes 
related to the magnetic field computations. There is no fictitious magnetic pressure in the FV solution, so we remove it. We are not solving for the magnetic field, we remove it. Since we are solving for the potential, so we copy pressure and make it like electric potential. Electric potential and electric potential. Since the value of electric potential is very small, so we lower the tolerance. If you recall, we have given the reference values. So we have to say electric potential. electric potential reference cell 0 and electric potential reference value 0 we save it We copy the test case location and paste the location in a new tab. Open the open form environment. Clean the tutorial. Create or generate the mesh. and run the test case. We open our test case at the same location and compare the results with the MHD form and the electric potential form. This is the Hartman electric potential. We open the open form file, tick all the volume fields and the mesh parts say open here also we cut a slice and see the velocity profile it seems that it is analogous to the results obtained from the MHD form. Now compare them with the line plot. Same y-axis show it on the same area. This is Axial velocity, we name it as trip potential form. 
here we can see that the results from the MHD form which are black curve and the results from the electric potential green curve almost overlap. So the results from these two approaches are verified and that's how we can say that our potential based approach gives nearly the same results which we obtained from the MHD form or the induction based approach. This is the velocity profile for different magnetic field strength and in the applied magnetic field MHD the magnetic field strength is characterized with the help of magnetic field the characteristic length L, the electrical conductivity sigma, density rho and the kinematic viscosity nu. In these two exercises, we have kept the material properties and the characteristic dimensions of the channel constant. Also, we have kept the magnetic field strength 20 tesla constant. And we obtained the similar results with these two approaches. In the following plot, we have varied the magnetic field strength and we can see that we get a flatter and flatter profile with the higher Hartman number. Now let us look at the second case where the magnetic field is not constant rather it depends on the applied current itself. Let us say in the current driven MHD flows where the current induced magnetic field is computed with the help of bias ebert law which is shown through this equation. In our group, we do study the current driven MHD flows and here we have injected uh, the current density from a narrow region and the current leaves from the bottom boundary uniformly. The second plot is the magnetic field with the current lines and the third plot shows the flow evolution with the current injection. To know more about this current driven MHD flows and to know more about the bias ebert law and the various approaches to compute the current induced magnetic field, you can refer our recently published paper in Computers and Fluids with the following link. With these activities, we have covered the MHD form solver and the test case for it. In the second part of this session, we have covered the modifying ICO form and incorporated the potential based approach equations. And in the third part, we have set a test case for this approach and we have verified these results. Thank you. So maybe we have some questions. There I have a question. Actually, uh, I'm new to this field, like a uh, magnetic field and electric field. Uh, like uh, we are only applying a magnetic field right here. So, uh, are we applying electric field also? Like, are see, they coupled up uh, associated with each other? Yes. So, see, this uh, the field electric electricity and magnetism is now a unified field. So, all electric fields they are they have a magnetic field. And all magnetic fields they have electric field, so it's not good to look at them separately. Uh, in fact, this unification is one of the major uh, cornerstones in the you know, physics. Uh, the work by Ampere, uh, the, the work by Faraday, Maxwell, uh, Oliver Heaviside, those are people. So, in fact, light is an electromagnetic wave, right? So it's basically E and B combined, uh, which make it electromagnetic. Now, sometimes you may see one manifestation of it. Like when you see permanent magnets, you see the magnetic field manifestation of it. Uh, but there is an electric field linked to, do, to that magnetic field also. Uh, similarly, uh, if you have a current uh, carrying uh, current in a, in a wire, you know that uh, from our right hand thumb rule, uh, we can predict mm -hmm. that uh, there is a magnetic field because of that current carrying yes. wire. Yes. And that basically goes to zero as if we go very far. Uh, so. Uh, we can predict how fast it will decay and where it will become zero and things like that. 
Now in that current carrying wire, if you include, say, let's say, many wires, let's say our home, uh, we have wire, electrical wiring of, of all kinds. Now, what is the magnetic field because of that? Mm -hmm. uh, so typically, it's not not very large. Typically, okay. and it's not very large because if you recall the equation that I shared, there was a constant uh, which looked like mu naught. Uh, okay. It's called the constant of magnetic permeability. Okay. That is a very small constant. So only when the current becomes of the order of kilo amperes, then you start seeing magnetic fields which are uh, not, uh, they cannot be ignored. Yes, sir. I have one more doubt uh, in your yeah. uh, slides, sir, where they, uh, you have written the 150 million Kelvin, some temperature kind of. Yes. I didn't get, uh, is that uh, practically like, is it possible to get such a high temperature? Uh, it's possible, yes. Uh, so it's, So that temperature exists in the plasma. Uh, so they are basically in nuclear fusion. What is the idea? The idea is to create a mini sun on earth, right? Because you would want that temperature for fusion to occur. Otherwise, how will you create fusion? Okay. So, so but uh, uh, if plasma having such a high temperature, how do we handle such a material? Like, yes. Uh, so that is a challenge. So it uh, is not contained. The plasma is not contained in a material. Okay. The plasma is confined by the magnetic field. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it is It is like uh, if you have come across this levitation, right? Levitation okay. is something, so something can float in the in the air. Okay. Right? So there's okay. there's something holding it. It's not visible to you. Okay. So magnetic force is similar. It, it is not visible, but it could be present because of the presence of the fields. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, so plasma is confined with the help of magnetic field. That is a different kind of magnetic field. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it, does, it has two components. So just to make it a little bit more exact, there is a the bi-direction magnetic field. One component of magnetic field is uh, in the azimuthal direction, so circular, and the other component is uh, along the circle. So uh, those two combine to create a, something called as a toroidal or tokamak type of uh, configuration, where it's possible to confine the plasma. Okay. Uh, so okay, sir. Thank this you. is a full research in itself. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So if you are interested, this uh, Institute for Plasma Research in uh, Gandhi Nagar. They okay. are the uh, representatives from Indian side uh, oh. in that uh, big project, ITER project. So you can look up the work uh, that is being done at IPR Gandhi Nagar also. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have uh, a query in the chat box. So the question is, if I recall the PB term or the fictitious magnetic pressure term for pressure induced by magnetic field was solved using piezo algorithm. Yeah, so the inspiration comes from the piezo algorithm and it is there in the MHD form, the inbuilt MHD form solver, right? So it is already there. So second part of the question. Okay, if I understand correctly, that uh, term might have been derived from governing equations. How does it couple with velocity? But no, as I said, it has not any physical relevance. It is just for the computational ease to my understanding, because if it would have been there, then we would have some term for it in the induction equation. But since we saw the derivation through the Ampere's law, Faraday's law, uh, divergence free condition of the B, so linking all that into one thread, we don't have any magnetic pressure there physically. So I think it's again for the computational ease. One can say it's linked to the it's linked to the uh, magnetic field. Maybe may just in a computational sense again, no, not physically, yeah. but just in a computational sense. So if I add a fictitious force, uh, like a fictitious term on the RHS of induction equation, uh, which will have minus of gradient of uh, ma magnetic pressure, uh, like that, that, and then that serves the purpose of only ensuring that the uh, induction equation is. Uh, so basically the magnetic field divergence is satisfied because if I take the divergence of induction equation, yes. uh, then that sort of gives us the same kind of equation, which I get from momentum equation. So it is a little bit of a tricky idea. I think uh, magnetic pressure is, uh, is it very specific to open form? So I think so, right? I think so. Yes. Yes. So there are other codes where magnetic pressure is not used also. Yes. Mm, yes, so there's a comment that the fictitious granular pressure term which comes into picture. So I think this basically same idea. When you are modeling as a continuum, it's a, it's a quantity which is just useful. So people 
use it. But there are other codes where it is not used. So that is also true. So there was no question on, on boundary conditions. So boundary conditions in MHD are not uh, very, very straightforward, uh, especially because there are like a uh, number of quantities like uh, current density and magnetic field. Sometimes people also use something called magnetic vector potential, which we didn't uh, talk about here today, uh, but that is another quantity which uh, sometimes people use. Uh, so, and then apart from that, we have electric potential. So there are already four quantities, uh, yeah, current density, magnetic field, electric potential, magnetic potential. So the what kind of bond regulation should be supplied is a uh, quite a tricky business. Uh, and you know, especially to make your computations realistic. So, but maybe that is something for some other time, some other day. It's a separate topic in itself. Uh, so if people want to learn electromagnetism, uh, especially those who are not from electrical and the similar backgrounds, uh, we don't study the vector form of electromagnetism uh, after especially high school. We hardly come across that, uh, even Maxwell's equations and stuff. So, of course, people who are physicists, they would know about this. Uh, but uh, engineers, especially mechanical, chemical, I think aerospace. So, in case you want to first revise electromagnetism, uh, the book by DJ Griffiths is one of the simplest books on this topic. Uh, and very well written book. So, that is what I didn't have in my list of books. Uh, but that is what you can make a note. Maybe I will also write this on uh, chat box. It's a very famous book among physicists. And yeah, if this book also looks, uh, seems to be a bit daunting to you, then you can, of course, go back to our classical H.C. Verma, Volume 2. We have query in the chat box. So he's asking this plasma has such high temperature and magnets are at 4 Kelvin, uh, which is, yeah, uh, which is very low. So, there, so the, it is, in fact, the purpose of having this, uh, this large temperature difference is to uh, be able to extract as much heat as possible. So, in fact, that's what you you need, right? Because you need a lot of heat, uh, which can be extracted, and that will uh, again ultimately go and run your uh, this uh, uh, turbine, which you can uh, then you can obtain the electrical energy. So, the more the temperature difference, the better it is. So, it is a challenge to do heat transfer. Uh, so, materials have to be designed such that uh, it has to be able able to handle such a high heat gradient, and that is why it makes this nuclear fusion extremely difficult and challenging. Uh, which is why you know i mean many there are many reasons behind uh, why it is taking so so much time uh, but part of the reason is that uh, there is very strong temperature gradient it's very difficult to uh, but that is not the uh, the main difficulty right now right now i think they have some other issues some kind of instabilities which arise in the experimental reactors uh, which they are trying to tackle uh, and uh, hopefully i think one day maybe another 10 years or so uh, after 50 years of research or even more than that, there will be some experimental reactor which will be uh, available as a successful uh, final result, hopefully. And then from there, we can take it forward and build realistic uh, nuclear fusion reactors. So I think there seems to be no questions. Uh, in that case, uh, Payal, you think you should... Uh, yes, if there are or... no more questions, we can definitely wind up the session a bit early. Okay. So thank you so much, Professor Abhishek Ranjan, for your precious time. Oh, thanks for organizing. Yes, I'm happy to share the information that we have.